very humid too. So it's just yeah. been one of those very rainy day today. So Ugh. Yeah. not my cup of tea. Well, then you won't like Australia in summer. <laughs> Uh, yep. yeah. Getting ready. Getting ready to start this shit. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna start recording. Cool. Alright, we're recording now. I can always, uh, edit and post, so don't worry about right. it. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Um, just wanna make sure this, uh, Skype screen's looking good. Yeah. I'm just trying to hide all this shit. Here. We have a great guest on. We have a guest from down under. I think this. I think <laughs> Tim qualifies as the first guest <laughs> from down under. He is. I believe he actually is. Yes. Well, definitely Melbourne. Yeah. No, we have not had a guest from uh, down from, under on the show. Yes, from Australia. No, no, it's. Uh, if you ever do get a chance, you have to come down here. It's, uh, oh, I'd love to. Very large. I'd, very I'd large. love to come down under. I know you guys. Uh, I know there's like a there's like a like a burger chain down there that's like pretty popular that I'd love to check out. A burger chain. Um, hmm. They make like they make like these crazy, like these crazy type of burgers. I'm look. I'm looking for it now. I forgot the name. I saw. Right. I saw it. I think on on Food Insider. I think I saw it online. Okay. Okay. Because the main chains we have are um, Hungry Jacks, Matters, of course. Uh, All right. So yeah. for everyone joining us, we are getting ready to start the show. Tim yep. is talking about burgers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Very Australian, hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there will Talking be about kangaroo burgers. <laughs> do not bring up the crocodile hunter because I'm sure it's still a touchy topic. Uh, the, oh. <laughs> no, no, just don't bring up Meryl Streep and a dingo ate my baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Just Bur about it's called seven. Burger Point. Burger, Burger Point. Point. That's yeah. Ooh. It's in Sydney. The, ah, well, there's, there's the issue. <laughs> yeah. So that's all up in Sydney. I'm in Melbourne, which is further I take south. It, I take it you're, you're very far away? Like how many hours, like how many hours away uh, are you? In a car, it'd be about a 10-hour drive. Whoa, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah. Is that uh, <laughs> Australian, Australian hours or American hours? <laughs> no, 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 that's just world hours. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just fucking Carry the 16 divided by 12. Hey, you're the only ones with the imperial system. Yeah. Well, it's not just us. There's, there's like two other countries that use it. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> so, so, so I take it Sydney's by the coast, right? And you're further, you're further inland? No, no, I'm by I'm by the um, sea too. Yeah, so we have oh. two. We have different states in Australia. Yeah, so they're in New South Wales. I'm in Victoria. Yeah, okay. so I'm further south. It's colder mm. down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's so south is here. cold, <laughs> <laughs> whereas north is cold for you. Mm. Yeah, so everything's sort of in reverse. Yeah, but I used yeah. to yeah, I used to live in Sydney. I used to live in Sydney. When I was working to see you. To those mm. of you just joining us, we are getting ready to start the episode. We have not started yet. We're just we're just riffing. Um, <laughs> we're these these live shit. shows, yeah, these live shows, you're going to get a lot of this banter at the beginning of the show before we're ready to actually start recording. Yeah. And then, of course, we will upload the actual episode, not not this bullshit at the beginning, <laughs> to all podcast <laughs> services and apps. Oh. Um, so if you want to, this this bullshit right here is exclusive to our Twitch. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. The director's cut. Yeah. So we are all about it. We're going to, as soon as Gustavo and uh, Marlon are ready, we will dive into this episode. We've got a whole outline uh, prepared, so. I'm ready. Let's let's get to it. I'll count you down. I'm whenever ready whenever you guys are. All right. Did Marlon want to count it down? Or did Goose want to count it down? Uh, Marlon can do it. Marlon, Marlon can be the, he, he can count it down. He's, he's great all at right. counting. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. 
<laughs> Get ready in three, two, one. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the latest episode of the AEG show. I'm your host this week, DG3. I don't get to do this a lot, so so it's going to be interesting. Maybe I'll maybe I'll fuck it up. But uh, we are uh, we're jumping into our time machines this week. We're going to take you guys back to the '90s. We're going to we're going to use some corny references all episode long. We're going to make some Australian jokes that you haven't heard in a while because we are joined by a very special guest this week, a former Sega hotliner from the 90s, Sega Master Tim. How you doing, buddy? G'day, fellas. How you going? Yeah, he's going to talk good? like that the whole episode. Um, <laughs> G'day, mate. And we also have the other host, who is not the host this week, apparently. We have Gustavo. Goose. Hey, everybody. And we, of course, have Marlon, the rock of AEG. I hope everybody's been doing a wonderful time today. I'm not. It's been raining like crazy here in Miami, and I don't like getting wet. Uh, so, yeah, it's been one of those days. Stay inside. <laughs> um, yeah. we, we prepped an outline. Our, our main man, Gustavo, he prepped an outline. He doesn't know anything about Sega, but he put this together anyway because he is, he is solid. He's, he's our guy. And we're going to – I'm better than Jeff. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna let <laughs> we're gonna let Tim introduce himself to you guys. Um, he's gonna go into why he's such a big Sega fan, how he became such a big Sega fan, especially in the the eighties and nineties. And uh, we're gonna go into that famous console war between Sega and Nintendo back in the eighties and nineties. And then we're gonna talk about the Dreamcast and how it affects the industry even today. And then we're gonna talk about Sega as a publisher. And then we'll we'll wrap everything up with our thoughts and. Kind of let Tim rattle on and all that. So <laughs> we're gonna jump right into it, man. <laughs> Tim, uh, Tim, let's hear about you, buddy. Let's uh, let's talk about you, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. You became a big Sega fan in the I, I assume the eighties, right? Eighties and nineties. What, what, what uh, did yeah, you start late, out? Late eighties. Yeah. yeah what late eighties, your... I became a Sega fan. Yeah. Okay, and you started out. Where, where did you start out gaming? Where did you start your gaming career? Uh, my gaming career. Um, so I grew up in a little town in northeast Victoria. So I'm in Melbourne at the moment. So it's about a three hour drive northeast. Um, grew up in a country town uh, called Beechworth. And um, I used to play all sorts of games and, you know, even board games. It was really sad I, because uh, I used to be in hospital a lot of the time because I've got type 1 diabetes. Blood sugars are always high. Um, so I was always in hospital, so I, I didn't get much time to hang around with my mates when I was in hospital. So, um, yeah, I used to play board games and sadly on my own. So <laughs> you were, I would imagine I was other players. So it was very hard. I, I just loved playing games of any sort. And then I got my eyes on one of those old Pong sets. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's a little beep, beep, beep. And um, that was about, I think that was about 78, 79, around about that time. Um, yeah, then I saw an Atari, and everything changed when I lay my eyes on the Atari, uh, sorry, the, the Sega Master System in 87. I think it was 87 when I first saw it, yeah. Um, and everything changed from that point on, <laughs> yeah. So that's where I come from. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome man like i i can't go as far back as you um i started <laughs> off i was born in 91 so all that shit yeah, unless you get the time machine it's <laughs> yeah. not gonna happen <laughs> unless we get one of those aeg time machines which i didn't have at the time i have one now but ah, not damn. not in the early 90s when i was born um yeah so i'm born in 91 i my my mm. first console was the sega genesis i had a genesis 2 i didn't even have the original one um mm. and uh i started off sega or Sonic 2 was my first first game yeah. that I can remember. I can't I don't remember yeah. playing the first one, but I might have, but Sonic 2, man, I spent hours playing this game, yeah. man. It's just I don't even <laughs> think I ever beat it. Like I can't yeah. remember back that far. I had three games, dude, and I played them all the time and it was uh mm. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Mortal yeah. Kombat, the original Mortal Kombat. And then yeah. this Batman game. I don't even remember if it had a title other than Batman or not, but yeah, I played the shit out of that game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, 
No, no, I, I think I'm just so lucky to be so old and see the development of video games all throughout that time. And right. it blows my mind, you know, when I used to be able to get excited about playing Pong on the TV, to watch a see now with open worlds, it just, it's just amazing um, to see that development. And in time, like you're probably going through that now where you're saying, well, when I was, you know, like you're saying, you're playing the Genesis there, um, how far games have even come since then. And it, it, and it gives you hope as to what's going to come in the future. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, man. Uh, I don't know if you had this or not on any, any console. Mm. But I remember when the, uh, the PlayStation two came out, right? I remember yeah. looking at Final Fantasy X for the first time and being like, these graphics cannot possibly get better than this. This is like, <laughs> this is the gaming peak right here. This will never, they'll never top this. Was there anything like that for you coming up before? Oh. Maybe necessarily before oh, yeah. the PS2? Yeah, so uh, you all know of the Commodore 64. Yeah, I know. You know uh, that? Yeah, right. And I, I s- still swear to this day, I, I don't think there'll ever be a big of a game as an impact on me as Elite. And it had 3D vector graphics, okay? And it was that moment when I saw that game, I thought, how could things get better than this? Honestly, how could it get better? <laughs> they could have they couldn't possibly fill in those those 3D lines. They couldn't it's just impossible to do it. You need a supercomputer to do it. And now you know, we've got supercomputers in our hands, basically, with our phones. So, yeah. um, so now, looking back at that, uh, it, it just makes you wonder where gaming's going to go. It really does. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned uh, we have supercomputers in our hands. And, and it's funny because these will be garbage in a couple of years, too. Like, Well, that, like, that's it. You walk yeah. out there with your Samsung Note 10 or whatever the fuck it is, and people are going to yeah. be making fun of you in 10 years for having that phone. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck right. is that? So like, it's it moves so fast, and it's even faster now than it was, say, back in the '80s and '90s. But mm. I just didn't know if you could relate to that that feeling of like, there's no fucking way we can top this. It's just, oh, yeah. it's impossible. But yeah, the next thing, yeah, like, I, you've kind of touched on how you became a a Sega fan. Um, yeah. Now, uh, tell us like how that fandom, like how how the hell did you get into becoming a Sega hotliner? Because that's something that's, <laughs> that that kind of thing doesn't even exist anymore anywhere. Like even for the nah, modern co- modern nah. companies, so it's just it's such a weird thing. Well, and what's uh, well, okay. So how did I get into it? Um, so being in hospital all the time, and I had my I had my master system there, and I'm playing it to death. I'm loving it. Um, He's playing. Hang on. Time. Yeah, I was playing Hang On. I was playing Hang On. I was playing, oh, let's have a look here. Um, let's see. Ghost House, Enduro Racer, F-16 Fighter, Fantasy Zone, uh, Teddy Boy. Uh, have at it. Have else? at it. Go ahead. Yeah, why not? The let's pull, let's pull them all off the shelf, too. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah uh, Shinobi. Yeah. So I'm playing all these games and so excited and, I, and it was, um, you know, the, the, there was a magazine we got in Australia from the UK called CMVG or Computer and Video Games and they had a high school thing in there and people used to, you know, get out with their 35 millimeter camera, take a picture or their Polaroid, send it in and then they get their name and number uh, that their score put in. And I'm going, oh, I can beat all these scores. And so I was getting really good at these games. Um, and then I thought, look, I need to know more about the games. And I looked on the back of one game, and that was Afterburner. And I saw an address in California. And I thought, ah, right, that's what I'm going to do. So I wrote out a letter just saying how much of a big fan I was. I wasn't really expecting anything back then. Now, just remember, there's no internet. We're writing letters. And when you send a letter back in the late 80s, it, it would take time. about three months. Mu- yeah, it, take, it takes a long time. Three months for it to get from our side of the planet to your side of the planet. I eventually got a reply from a girl, 
uh, a woman by the name of Judy. Judy Jet. Judy Jet. Judy Jet. Judy Jet. Yeah, Judy Jet. And um, and she said, oh, oh, thanks for being such a big fan and all that. And from that day on, we were sending uh, letters back and forth to each other. You know, I'll send through a few little things, and she'd tell me what's going on in the U.S. Um, we had this strange fascination about talking about soap operas because that's all I could basically do while I was sitting in hospital. I'd watch these soap operas and Days of Our Lives would Like come sands up. through the hourglass. Yeah, so are the days of our lives, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we talk about it because uh, the U.S. was months ahead of us. So, yeah, and she'd tell me what was happening. So, But um, one day she sent through a box she didn't give me any warning she sent through this box and I go, well, what's this and i open it up and looking at this sheet and i think it was uh, i think i've got the name gavelius i think it was gavelius gravelius i can't print can't remember the name but anyway it's showing me walkthroughs for each level and the cheats and then i open up another page and it's another game and another game now the thing is we had uh, what I had in this box was cheats and walkthroughs for all the games that we had in Australia, but tons of games that were in the US and tons of games that had not been released yet. So basically, I'm sitting on the Google of all the tips and cheats for all the Mega Drive and Master System games or Genesis games. Wow. And I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> what do I do with this stuff? <laughs> because, I, okay, great, I've got the cheats. I've got, but I can't afford to buy all the games and that. So a few months went by, and I picked up another game. Um, I think it was Space Harrier. And on the back of uh, maybe I can find one here. Nah, on, on the back of the games, here we go. So if you look carefully here, it says, you know, are you stuck? call to see the hotline and you can see there it's an o2 number so that number was in sydney so um i thought well how about if i give them a call i gave them a call and yeah true to the word yeah they knew their stuff and i thought oh okay okay how do i get a job there <laughs> and just about every day every week <laughs> i would just keep on calling them how do i get a job how do i get a job and I think they eventually gave in and said, "Oh, let's let's just give this Tim guy, a, a you know, let's let's just shut him up and you know, probably tell him he can't get a job here, you know, just thanks for coming and all that." So mum and dad thankfully paid for the plane tickets up there, and back then plane tickets were very expensive, not they not like they are today. Sat down for the interview. Never done an interview in my life. Never had a job in my life for crying out loud. <laughs> and sat there and answer a few questions and as i always say that like you always get asked this one question and and that is well what makes you think you would be of any worth to the company what can you give us why should we hire you and i had it all set up i, I just had a gut feeling I, I, it would they would ask me that sort of question and i pulled out this piece of paper and slid it across and the woman who was interviewing me goes oh what's this what's this so, no, 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 have a read, have a read. And um, it was a game that hadn't been released in Australia or even in the US. And they're going, what? The cheats walk through. How did you get this? And I told them my story. Oh, have you got more? I go, yeah. Oh, can, can, can we have them? Oh, well, it all depends. Blackmail. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! You know, if you want it, <laughs> give something back to me. So, um, they would have. If, if it was today, they would have called legal, and they yeah. would have got rid of it. <laughs> yeah, they would have called legal. Yeah. yeah, you'd be in prison for the rest of your life now. <laughs> yeah. And Ju Judy a wouldn't have a job. <laughs> yeah, Judy wouldn't have a job. <laughs> yeah, you kind of sold Judy out. I gotta say, you yeah, sold, you sold yeah. Judy out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Judy. This um, is my future here. <laughs> sorry, mate. <laughs> um, yes, and. Um, a few days later, they offered me the job. I packed up everything um, and headed up to Sydney. Never lived in the in the city before, and everything changed. It was just a rush, um, and I was just so thankful because 
uh, where, where I live, a small country town, you had two main industries. You could either work at a prison or you could work at a mental asylum. Um, neither of those interested me in any way, shape or fucking way. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, and, and because I was always in hospital, I, I had to – I couldn't finish my schooling. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I thank Sega to this day because if that didn't happen – I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you today. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. this sounds kind of cor- it's this sounds kind of corny, and oh, but I think you'll probably yeah. you probably think you probably will agree with my assessment. But in a way, like mm. Sega sort of saved you. I mean, think about it. Yeah. This is a great this is a great oh. story. There, this guy was saved is... by a gaming company. This guy was yeah. saved by video games. This is why we do the show. Yeah, we're and, looking to save uh, you. <laughs> and, and I honestly, I. I I can't thank Sega enough for that one opportunity. And I think you, you see out there on Twitter and a lot of the streams out there, you see a lot of people with uh, health conditions and all that, and and they have a hard time interacting, you know, at, outside of their house and all that. And you see this all the time, that, that gaming seems to bring these communities together. It doesn't matter, you know, if you've got only one leg or you have a, a mental health issue, everyone's bonded by this one common thread, which is video gaming. And it's great. So yeah. I'm, one of the, I'm one of the lucky ones that, that loves something so much I ended up working for it. Um, I took it a little bit, uh, took a few steps further than, than most people. I... I harassed Sega in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it worked. It worked. It worked out in your favor. You kept and, knocking the door, man. Yeah, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you kept knocking the yeah. door. Yeah. And you have to be That's insistent. So your your story oh. is a is a is a great one. Your story is a aspirational one for many of the for many gaming fans growing up today, where they they may feel like they don't have a a, a way to get into the industry. But I think now in today's world. You just have an abundance of, of avenues and alternatives to try to get in. You yes. have social media. You have the internet. You know, you have YouTube. You have, oh. again, the, the internet has just uh, uh, democratized ways to get into the industry. Yeah. You may not necessarily be able to work for an IGN or a GameSpot, but you can be a small outfit like, say, us, AEG, and still be able to contribute. So that's that's an awesome thing. And, and we have to thank mm. folks like you for that in a way who, oh. who paved the way. So thanks. Oh no, no! Don't thank me. <laughs> there you go. No, um, no, it, it's we can't thank Sega. They're gone. No, <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> oh, that's a ball. That's a that's a low move, Dalton. That's a ball. Uh, but but fair, <laughs> but fair. Um, yeah, no, it, it. I'm just so happy as to how far gaming's come nowadays. It's multi-billion. There are so many avenues where you can get into it. Whereas back in my day, you could maybe do some admin. You could maybe write for games. Your options were very limited because not many people knew about the video game industry, even back in the early 90s. It was, uh, it was a very cowboy industry, I, I must say. So, yeah. yeah. Cowboys? Yeah, a lot of cowboys <laughs> out there. Yeah, yeah. especially in Australia, yeah, huh? look at... Oh yeah, yeehaw! <laughs> um, uh, don't say crocodile Dundee. He's not a Kimball. Anyway, uh, no, no, bush rangers. We'll like I, bush like rangers. I said before the show, crocodile bush. hunter is too soon. But we'll yeah. uh, <laughs> we'll get there. The, the next thing I want to get into, obviously, you, you're yeah. working. You're working as a Sega hotline in the '90s, right? Yeah. This is peak Sega yeah. right here. The early '90s, yeah. early to mid '90s. That's peak Sega. So. Yeah, you've got. Of course, you got the. You you can't talk peak Sega without talking about Nintendo, oh, especially course, yeah. in the early nineties, <laughs> right? Because Nintendo, arguably, and especially in the nineties, one of the biggest video game companies out there, right? So, oh, you got Nintendo cool. versus Sega, which was one of the dirtiest rivalries and that we've ever seen oh. in video gaming. Well, we don't we don't Hell necessarily yeah. see stuff like that anymore. Minus Sony's, no. you know, E three from I don't know six six seven years ago when the PS four and the Xbox One were announced. Um, you don't see that. I, I, I remember the, the, the phrase, uh, and, and Sega used this in their advertising a lot. And it was the whole, yeah, everyone's heard it, right? The Sega does what Nintendo don't. Nintendo don't. Yeah. Now, like you, you're, you're working for Sega in the nineties when all this is going on. Did you, 
My, I guess the biggest question I have, I guess it's not even really that important of a question. <laughs> it's the only one I can't get off my mind right now. Did you have Bro, Nintendo I, prank callers calling you guys and talking shit, or was there none of that? Because uh, um, <laughs> I would have. Sure, I'm sure there was. I'm sure there was uh, that that we got them because we we had a few odd calls, but I I know that uh, one of the other Sega masters, Brian. Uh, he used to call up the Nintendo hotline, which was down here in Melbourne, um, and and he he'd ring up and ask when Sonic was going to come out on the Nintendo. You know, so <laughs> do little shit things like that. Yeah, um, yeah, and I'm sure it happened all the time. Um, either we weren't aware of it, or um, you just didn't personally get yeah, any, huh? We just didn't personally get it, and we just hung up on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Because I don't go, ha, ha, this is the Nintendo hotline, ha, kick your head and hang up the phone. So. Did you guys like have meetings when you came into work, like just to talk about Nintendo? Like, hey, these guys, what what, what can we do to get uh, back at these motherfuckers? Yeah. Like, there was a nah, big, there was both. a big rivalry, right? So I didn't know if you guys oh, were doing yeah. any dirty stuff behind the scenes. Because um, nah. the Sega Hotline, that yeah. was part of Sega <clears throat> as a whole, right? That wasn't that wasn't an yeah. independent company. That was Sega. Okay, so um, Sega here in, in Australia was distributed by Sega Aussie Soft, okay? Um, and I think eventually Sega um, bought out Aussie Soft. I don't get, I'm not sure of the full story, but, but basically they started taking control of the operations. And the CEO of Sega Aussie Soft, Kevin Burmeister, was heading the operations there. But. Um, I don't know, do you remember the name of Al Nielsen, the head of marketing? No? Well, you should know because Is he's the, the guy Nielsen? that came out with... Yeah, go Al ahead. Nielsen. Yeah, yeah. He was okay. the guy that came out with the phrase, uh, Sega does that Nintendo. Okay. And um, and he, what he used to do is travel around the world and make sure every country was doing their thing to Sega and that. He said he never had to come down to, to Australia because we were looking after ourselves. Um in Australia, Sega was big, like really, really big. Um, and a lot of kids in Australia don't understand that Nintendo weren't always on top of the mountain. Like they only had it during the, um, when the Master System came out, Sega had about 60% of the market share. When the Mega Drive slash Genesis came out, that went up to 70, 80%. Sega was just dominating the market down here. So we were king of the hill for a long time, for about uh, five to eight years. We are on the top. Yeah, yeah. So so we didn't – Al Nielsen didn't have to come down here. We could look after ourselves because we dominated the market so much. Yeah. So you guys didn't have Nintendos. You guys were – No, we did. <laughs> oh, we did. <laughs> we did. We no, did but... have Nintendos, but um, yeah, as the years went by, as when the Super Nintendo came out and uh, the N64, obviously the balance changed there. Yeah. Was it just, uh, was it Sega's advertising in Australia or like, was it heavier down there than it was anywhere else or it just, it just happened to be the way it bounced oh. down there? Um, it wasn't heavier, but there was a lot, I wouldn't say it was heavier, but it it was a constant. It okay. was a constant. We was we were sponsoring things. We were sponsoring um, uh, one of the NBL teams down uh, NBL teams down here, um, the Sydney Kings. Our our logo was on on the deck. You know, it was everywhere. Um, we had Sonic turn up, little mascot turn up to to the games and that. And we'd hand out games. We used to go around to schools and um, shopping centers and have road shows. We were everywhere because we were making so much money down here. We had a uh, we had a uh, we we covered the market and dominated the market so well. Yeah. Oh yeah, man, that's uh, that's cool because I, I don't. It wasn't like that here. Obviously, Sega was popular in the nineties mm. everywhere. Yeah, but mm. I would say here I had a Sega, but. Most of my friends had Nintendos. They had the Super yeah. Nintendo or the NES, and then obviously migrated to the N64 or the PS1 at the time. But mm. 
So I went from a Sega Genesis to a PlayStation, an original PlayStation, in, I don't know, probably yeah. late, later 90s, 97 or so. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I guess I can kind of relate to you a little bit, but like I know my, my buddy Gustavo here, he's not really familiar with Sega. He said, he's been saying that all week because he's, he's our <laughs> perfectionist, right? He wants to make sure everything goes well. <laughs> And he's like, fuck, I'm not too familiar with Sega. We got this Sega guy coming on, and I'm freaking the fuck out. But he always manages to do well. Yeah. Sure. So he's he's a guy that he didn't have Sega consoles. So, And he, yeah, he's yeah. he's probably the majority here in the United States, I would say. Because yeah. a lot of my Gustavo. friends didn't have a Sega. Gustavo. Yeah, um, it, it's it's my... never too late, Gustavo. Join us. <laughs> never too late. Join us. 30 years later. Yeah. <laughs> Our last concert came out 20 My, uh, years ago, but join us. Yes, yes. <laughs> Actually, uh... My experience, my experience with Sega consoles has has been very, very minimal. Um, my mom mm. bought her nephew a Sega Master System years before I was born, and then my cousins and I got it as a hand me down. Ah, oh, so okay. we used okay. to play. We used to play that as a kid, and the only, I think the only game that I remember playing for it was Hang On, which is why I I brought up that <laughs> reference. You brought up that. But then, yeah, that's the only one that I could think of, but. I, I did get a Dreamcast about oh. a year before the PS2 came out, or yeah. but by then, I remember I think I think Sega was going out of the hardware business because I remember here in the states they had a bundle where it was ninety nine dollars and wow. you, you got a Dreamcast with an extra controller and three of the two K sports games which were wow. MLB, NBA, and NFL two K. Wow. And I think <laughs> that I got Sonic the Hedgehog as an extra <clears throat> and Crazy Taxi. Oh, fuck. Crazy Taxi. Who doesn't Crazy. remember Crazy Taxi, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I remember. Like, and I and to... Hydro Thunder, too. I, I loved Hydro Thunder on, on the Dreamcast. Yeah, that was sweet. I played <laughs> it on PlayStation, I believe. Or no, I played it as an arcade game. Yeah. Um, that's, that's where I first mm. played Crazy Taxi. Mm. I, I don't think I've ever actually played mm. Crazy Taxi on a console. My dad was a truck driver, and when I was a little kid, I used to go with him. Oh, so we'd stop oh, in like okay. truck stops, yeah. and there'd be like arcades in there, and I'd get to play these games. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, like Crazy Taxi, man, that was a, such a man. fun one to play. And then, like like you said, Hydro Thunder, that was <clears throat> that was so fun, man. I I'm glad you brought those two games up for real. Yeah, yeah, it's no, for sure. Uh, so while we're while we're on the topic of you you working for Sega <clears throat> and stuff, obviously, <clears throat> I don't know how long you're there, how long you stuck around. I don't know if yep. I don't know if you were there for the downfall with the internet coming in and you know with Sega mm. con- Sega's console console production kind of slowing and grinding to a halt basically with the yep. Dreamcast. I don't know if you were there for all that, but if you were, if you could take us through that, that would be awesome. Ah, uh, okay, no. So I I left just after the Saturn had been released. Okay. Okay, but you. Over here, we could already see the writing on the wall when the PlayStation came out. Everybody was drawn to it. Even Nintendo was having a hard time trying to catch up with what uh, the PlayStation was bringing out. Um, and the, I remember when I first saw the PlayStation, I was going, how is this going to take off? Look at the control pad. I mean, there's so many freaking buttons on it. How can you keep... You know, do all the things and all that, but um, clearly I was wrong. <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, the PlayStation just um, overwhelmed the market. Really, uh, everybody was getting one, but I could I could see things were on the downturn. A lot of um, the other Sega masters would say the same thing: is that when when Sega started charging a dollar a minute for our services, we thought. Uh, yeah, that's not right. We didn't feel right about charging kids a dollar a minute because, you know, you got to put it into perspective. When Aladdin, remember, remember the game Aladdin? Yes, I now, do. Okay, okay. How much was Aladdin for you? How much I, did? Dude, I I was, remember. I was a kid, man. My parents bought right. that shit for me. Let's 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 put this into perspective. When Aladdin came out, it was worth a hundred and twenty nine dollars. Is that US? That's yeah, yeah, Australian. Okay. Oh, yeah, Australia. That's straight. That's Australian. So that's about ninety nine dollars. Mm. Add inflation to that in today's terms, it almost becomes like two hundred and fifty dollars. 
So think yeah. about that. You've just spent that amount of money and then Sega had, well, guys organising a hotline, decide to start charging people a dollar, dollar a minute. I think they've already paid for that service, haven't they? Mm-hmm. So um, the guys started leaving because they felt they dirty. were getting this bad. Felt dirty, yeah. Felt they felt for. dirty um, because we just wanted to help our kids and lonely housewives out there. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that's who they were. Lonely like, housewives. Went over your head. Went over your head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, he could say that yeah. because he was in it. He heard he has the calls and the experience, right? So, oh, okay. <laughs> now, were you guys just handling calls in the United States, or and I'm sorry, in the United States? I, I, where, 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 where the fuck am I? Um, were you guys just handling calls <laughs> in the Australia? Did, uh, did the I'm, states have I'm their own? <laughs> yeah, did the states have their yeah, own hotline? Yeah, or... yeah, so the states had their own hotline. We uh, Australia had their own. New Zealand had their own. Um, they only had two people <laughs> on their hotline. Um, mind you, back then their population was about, I might be wrong here, about three million. So there, there was many people over there. Um, the UK, the UK didn't really have a hotline. Um, they had multiple hotlines. So the, you had like a, a, a different number for every different game that came out. It was just a money-making tool because yeah. they were on the, the, the dollar per minute sort of system already. Oh, um, but, yeah, we just looked after the Australians. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And before we go to the next topic, I just want to make a – do a quick reminder mm-hmm. that we are live. Um, obviously, <laughs> when you hear this on podcast services, it will not be live anymore. And I just want to give a quick shout-out. We received a donation from uh, Chi. Hey. So we appreciate that. Um uh, this uh, all this live stuff still in beta. My mic's been having issues. I don't know if it still is or not, but <coughs> oh, it's working fine now. Okay, <coughs> you're um, good. Goose can put a timestamp on this and edit it out if he wants to. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to just quick shout that out real quick. Um, and now, while we're on the topic, we're gonna move on to another topic. I don't know why I said it like that, but uh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of distracted. I've had family up all weekend. I'm, right I'm burnt yeah. out and tired, but... Uh, you need I'll, a beer. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, shit. Yeah. I need a lot of yeah. beers. Um, so you said you left before the Saturn came out? Uh, just just after. Just, just after, after it came Saturn. out. So yeah. our next topic is on the Dreamcast. and I, Gustavo, mm. Marlon, and I, we've had this conversation a couple times how... Now, I truly believe that the Dreamcast was ahead of its time. I think. Yep. And I don't know. I don't know what Sega did wrong. I don't know if you can uh, lean into this topic at all since you left yep. before it came out. But I don't know. What are your thoughts on the Dreamcast and and its ultimate failure? And its ultimate Actually, failure. Actually, before 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 you answer that question, yeah, I'd like it if maybe you can give us like a little bit of runway. Why like? Why was the the Dreamcast conceived? What was it in response to? Uh, I'd really, I'd really, I'd, I'd really like that, and I think you'd be able to give some special insight that others probably are, are not going to be able to, because I know that uh, okay. uh, uh, Moore was at the helm back then, because he was the one who spearheaded the Dreamcast project, and I'd like you to start from there if you can. Okay. Well, these are only just my personal opinions. So you know, everybody's read things about the downfall of Sega. Um, and I pretty much share a lot of those views myself. So, look, so, uh, the Saturn, when the Saturn came out, one of the... the uh, we were discussing this yesterday, uh, me and the other Sega masters, um, and the question was asked, what would you do differently with the Sega Saturn? Now... The other guys were saying, look, they didn't release Sonic with the Saturn. I mean, this is our mascot. Sonic's our mascot. And they didn't do that. They didn't release Sonic with the Saturn. Nintendo does it all the time. They always have a Mario title out. So they marry the two brands together and sell them as one package. So they didn't do that with the Saturn. Um my personal view is they shouldn't have released the Saturn. They just shouldn't have done it. 
<laughs> I know it would have been a big time between the Genesis and the Dreamcast, but I just think it was too rushed. Everything was too rushed. And um, because of that, they just lost their bearings completely. You know, it's just like anything in life. When you're in a hurry to do something, um, you, you don't have your thoughts about you. And you're always scampering about and you're making all the wrong decisions all the time. And this is what I think has basically happened to Seeger. They were rushing about too much, trying to keep up with the Joneses and not worrying about it and not worrying about bringing out a proper product in the end. So just so many mistakes were made. So why, why did the Dreamcast fail? I think it was simply because of the reputation of the Saturn. Because they thought, well, that's that's failed. You know, how could Sega come out with a better product? And look, this, the Dreamcast is an amazing product, an amazing console for its time. And yes, it was way ahead of its time. Um, but I think Sony pretty much established its market already. Um, I think people are more drawn to a brand which is Sony. Everyone knew Sony. They've been around for a long time, even though, you know, they were firstly known for camcorders and TVs and other electrical goods. But um, Sony was a brand you could trust. And I just don't think people had the trust with Sega anymore. They lost it. That's just the gut feel I get from it all. But um, I wish I was inside of marketing. I wish I was there at accounts and seeing the sales figures come in. Um, I wish it was there in the the boardrooms to see what decisions were being made. And I guess, you know, maybe, maybe we might find something out in the console wars series if it ever comes out. Yeah. 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 That's so, a good one. Oh man. That's, that's crazy because like, like you said, you kind of, you dove into it a little bit with the Sega or the Sega Genesis. God damn it. I'm sorry. Everyone. Watching this. Um, the, Sega, <laughs> the Sega Dreamcast being ahead of its time and, and and you mentioned Sony as a whole, like obviously you said they they were known for their cameras and their their televisions and other electronics. The Walkman, right? Who can forget that? Yeah, but, yeah. But the thing is, by the time the uh, the Dreamcast had come out, the PlayStation mm. was already well established. Um, yeah, I can't give you the sales figures of the the PlayStation in 1999. I know Lifetime it sold over 100 million <clears throat> units. So PlayStation yeah. Sony had already been established with the PlayStation, and then. The Dreamcast came out, and you said it, like you said, it came off the heels of the the Saturn, which was it, it, the consumers lost faith in in Sega. They lost yeah, faith in their ability to put out a quality console, even though the Dreamcast, in my opinion, the Dreamcast, like I said, it's ahead of it was ahead of its time. It was amazing, right? I didn't have one growing right. up, but a couple buddies did, and it was amazing. So, yeah. like you, I think and, you covered it well. Yeah, and look, don't get me wrong, I love the Saturn. I really do. Um, it's it's amazing what they were able to put together in such a short amount of time. I don't know how they did it. Um, you, if you pull the thing apart and you look at the at the circuitry and how it was all put together, it it looks like a complete nightmare. But they got the job done. Um, and I've I've been in uh, I got in touch uh, with a, a contact here. His name's Shane Batty, and um, as much of a Nintendo fan that he is, he loves the Sega Saturn. And he's got the, the pro, um, he, oh, what has he got? He's got the dev kits for him, the big, nice. big ass units. Yeah, he's got the dev kits. And he's even got, he, he brought it into a meeting one time down here in Melbourne, the one and only prototype that was released for CS94. 495 the winter ces the one actual unit and you can see the telltale signs of what it was going to look like in the future um so he's now in the in the process of putting an actual uh saturn the circuitry and all that into the prototype version of the saturn and it's going to look sick and yeah yeah, but um, look, the Saturn is amazing. The, the Saturn is amazing, but there were just so many mistakes, and I just think they shouldn't have released it. Maybe they should have just, you know, cooled their jets, waited an extra year or two, and brought out another product. Um, 
And I think another another uh, another thing that one of the other guys brought up for the the reason for its failure for the Dreamcast failure was the 32x, um, because you know the Tower of Power. You got the 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 Sega CD, then you got yeah. the Mega Drive, then you got the 32x, and another thing in it that it just too looked ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too many peripherals. It just, it just looks like a tower by this point. Um, it the thing that really bothers me, and this is coming from somebody who played the Genesis when he was a kid. Yeah, yeah. That when the Genesis came out, all and I had a six pack with you know Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, mm. you know. Um, uh, and I just loved that console. There was there was an mm. amazing lineup of games in that console mm. when the PlayStation One came out and the Nintendo sixty four came out. You know, you didn't hear like you looked at the Nintendo sixty four, you look at the PS One, and then you look at the Saturn, and you're mm. thinking, mm, it, I, I don't understand yeah. like. Why would I pick this two consoles who are doing 3D graphics yes. over the Saturn, who is still doing you know 32-bit graphics and it and it looks okay, but it's not mm. this leap like Nintendo 64. And That's right. Then when I came to the states in 2000, you know, I didn't hear anything about the Dreamcast until yeah. way beyond when I already had a PlayStation 2. And yeah. I look back on it and I go, they had that on the back burner. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and they decided to bring the Saturn over there. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you with him. I think they should have just kept the Saturn yeah. in the back burner, and, and they just re- released the Dreamcast over it because it was a much better console. Like the the lineup mm. was better, and mm. Mm. people were saying, "Oh, you know, they had you know dreams and stuff like that." I get it. The Saturn was a really cool piece of upgrade for the sit for the, from the Genesis, but it wasn't going to compete with PlayStation One. It wasn't no. gonna compete with Nintendo sixty four. And uh, it's a <laughs> shame. I'll just say and, and I think Go ahead. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I was gonna say and and that response is so typical. It that response like your confusion that you're going through right now. You know, like, <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Like I got this, but why Saturn? Why would I? Why would I spit? No, that, and this, yeah, it it is just a question mark of a console. I know that you know? I never said the phrase when I was a kid. I'm going over to a buddy's house to play some Saturn. I know I never said yeah. that once in my fucking life. <laughs> what the fuck, Sega? Drop the ball. It was either to play yeah. PlayStation from someone who had a multi tap, yeah. which was not me. I didn't have a multi tap, but uh. Or a Nintendo 64, which you didn't need a multi-tab because it had four fucking controller ports in it. But yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And um, and I think, look, when when you lose the consumer's trust, um, it's it's very hard to, to grab that back. A good example of that is probably the Wii U. You know that that was not many people really. It's it. it it doesn't have a bond with many people. People will talk about the Wii. People will talk about, you know, all the other consoles, but the Wii U is sort of like that strange cousin you talk about, you know. So, uh, <laughs> very yeah. bit odd, you know. Um, it also so didn't help that it was made by Fisher Price. You know, that, well, yeah. that too. <laughs> <laughs> didn't really help. Really. Tim, no, I don't know. Tim, I don't know if you can answer this question, but we just got a question in chat. Why they oh, use yeah. two Hitachi SH2s for the main processors and only build it as a 32-bit system? Do you know why they did yeah. that? Can you answer that or no? No idea. No, <laughs> I can't answer that. <laughs> hey, he's like, stop. Hey, I, I, no, no. Hey, I, it doesn't, it doesn't make guys, any sense. I, I play, I play games. Um, I and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn about what makes the consoles work. You know, even at 47 years of age, <laughs> you know, and it still blows my mind today is the, how they put these things together so um you know that guy I was mentioning about before shane batty um you know he's sort of showing me what this bit does and that bit does but um, i sort of like sit there and nod and 
and I'm trying to under, understand. <laughs> so, but um, it's a little bit past my time, mate. <laughs> so, yeah, trust me. Yeah, so I can't, I can't answer that. Sorry, mate. I'm you sorry. You know what, though? I feel I'm only 28, I, only 28, but I already feel like time starting only. to pass me by. So I, uh, I can only imagine. Like it, I, I'm slipping away, yeah. too. I get on the internet. And I see all these like slang terms and stuff on the internet, and I'm like, "What the fuck does that mean?" I can't tell you. Can somebody explain to me what is scopa tu mana? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> dude, I I googled dude, shit so dude, many times, dude, and it's don't. not recent either. This is like don't. five years don't. in the making. I had to Google what fapping meant like five years okay. ago. Here's I didn't know what the fuck <laughs> that was. So it's been going on for a while. Freaking ghost comes in. He asked me. A question: What the hell is a waifu? And I'm like, yeah, don't even get into that. <laughs> yeah, don't even get into that. <laughs> That's a black hole. Right? I text, I text Marlon on the chat, and I'm like, Marlon, this is. I'm a little embarrassed. What is a waifu and a husbando? What is this? <laughs> like, I'm trying to explain it in like the most positive way that I can spin it, and it's it just it's wrong all the way. Well, it's, I'm just getting old. This time I don't know what it means, but I don't. Here's well, the thing. Well, <laughs> Go ahead. You got to understand the context of what was happening in the 90s with Nintendo and Sega. We were in this war of 8 bit over 16 bit, yeah. over 32 yeah. bit, over graphics super processor that, that <laughs> at the end of the day, it was just jargon that just made absolutely no sense whatsoever. Same, <laughs> same thing that, that's happening now with the whole 4K and 8K. You know, it's mm. you're talking about monitors and processors that don't. That not the average Thanks. consumer is gonna look at it and go, yeah, I can see the difference. Like, no, somebody yeah. has to be very minute into it to look at the, every little detail about it. And mm. the thing for me, and talking about just Sega in general, I always it always felt for them like it was a race against time. It was always a yes. race against the next console, the next big thing. Yeah, and it got up to them because. Yeah. Because Sony was in the back burner going, you know what? We're going to wait. Let this two at it. Let Nintendo and yeah, Sega yeah, bust yeah. their butts up. And we will have our team make the best console we can make. That's, and I mean, that's and, not entirely true because Sega and Sony were working together on a console. There's actually prototype yeah. videos and shit of that out. But for, wait, wasn't, wasn't that Sony and Nintendo? Yeah, Sony and Nintendo. Did I say Sega? Sony, not not Sega. Yeah, Sega. Okay, well, I'm sorry. It was Sony Let and Nintendo. Let these two guys butt each other yeah. out, and we'll just sit back and we'll just profit when we get the thing. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Just, just, I, I, I would, I would, ah, I would have loved to be like a fly on the wall in internal meetings over in like, you know, headquarters of Sega Japan to see like what, like what were the last hours like. For me personally, like. I don't. I'm again. I'm not very familiar with Sega, but I I always mm. chalk it up to mismanagement and either lack of vision or lack of a team that doesn't know or is unwilling to implement that vision. Because like we've all yeah. like we, we all agree and we're all in consensus that the Sega Dreamcast was ahead of its time. It did face a juggernaut, 18 or however many months later, with the PS2, which probably is the biggest factor as to why it went went out of business. But yeah. if you, if you look at that whole t- timeline. I would just love to go back in time and see, okay, what were the key decisions that Sega made that made it made it fail as a hardware manufacturer? Because yeah. if, if you look at Nintendo, they've been very successful with hardware. And I don't want to be reductive. Right? We all love Nintendo. But, you know, their, their, their hardware isn't as powerful as their competitors. There's always some sort of a, a gimmick, right, either with the 3DS or with the Nintendo Switch. And they, they have somehow find, have found a way to carve up an, a, a niche in the market and still be successful on the back, mostly, of their first-party games. I, I, again, mm-hmm. I don't want compa- to compare software lineups, but adult and said said a great line when he says hey when i was a kid i never i never told my parents hey i'm c- crossing the street over my friends to play some sega saturn right <laughs> and 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 that's and that's being mean to the to the sega folks because i i'm i am positive that the sega folks <laughs> had an amazing yeah. lineup of games but in comparison oh, yeah. to a nintendo i don't i i, I just don't see you know p- people love people love uh sonic 
But again, just going back to the hardware, I, I would love, I would have loved to been a fly on the wall just to see what was going on. Like, was there any like sort of infighting? Was there any maybe a little bit of a, a, a tribalism in between those Sega teams? Is is that something that maybe you can share on or or shed nah. shed some light I, on? I, I just, it, it wasn't because basically where the hotline was, we were downstairs and all the corporates were upstairs. Okay, so we. We didn't really get to see much of what was happening with with what was going on with the boardrooms or that. Okay, so you guys were siloed just, off in that sense. In the, in a sense, because we were all casuals, we were all casuals. Um, as much as they welcomed us as part of the Sega team, that we were all but basically kids. We played video games, and and you know, I, I can't say that they looked down on us. Of course but not. No. Our, our, but our business sense was clearly not mature there. And I can understand that. that. They would not involve us in those sorts of things. Yeah, not not that. Not at all. No, no. Because, yeah, that's business. That's business. I understand actually, that now, but I didn't back then. <laughs> actually, what I, what, what I will ask, because, you know... Yeah. Again, not to be, I, I like the word reductive, but not to be reductive, but, you know, being, <laughs> you know, being a Sega hotliner in its most barest sense was customer service. And unfortunately, I know a little bit too much about customer service working, <laughs> yeah. working, working in higher ed. But were there any were there any peaks and valleys? I'm assuming probably towards the holidays, you guys got a rush of phone calls. Uh, or, or, yeah. or, if, or if there was like a big first party title that, that was about to drop and then after it dropped again, there was like a, like a swelling of phone calls. Could you speak to that in your experience or, or give oh, some anecdotes? Oh my God, yeah. So Christmas was always mental um the, the phone would not stop ringing there'd be like a team of eight of us there they're all taking calls and there was just no break and we'd like get we get somebody to order pizza just so we could eat between calls and that um that's that's when it was at its most busiest um and the the other problem was is that see our job was basically to help out people through games and that. Mm -hmm. But then the tech issues would be given to a different department. But because the tech team had gone on holidays for Christmas, oh. Oh, you we got that. lumped. Yeah, we had to deal with that. So, um, you know, Whoa. my 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 Mega Drive is not working. My Master System is not working. I bought this game. And, it's got, and so we had to deal with that as well. Um so um, it was just a ma an amazing influx of calls. And it wasn't just for one day. You know, this would go on for about a week of all these calls. Um, there will also be school holidays. So we have, I, I don't know what you have there in the States, but there's four terms for all the, for all the schools in Australia. So there'd be four times in the year that, um, you know, kids would be home and calling up. Um, and same with parents and the lonely housewives. <laughs> um, um, and then you've got your weekends, obviously. So Did they ever ask you what you were wearing? Uh, <laughs> the, the, the lonely housewives. He's referring to the lonely Oh, house. my God. <laughs> That's Why quite funny. Wrong? Thank you for calling it's the Sega Hotline. This is Tim. Hey, Tim. Oh. <laughs> this is Jared Hi. from State Farm. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Hi. Hi. <laughs> um but there was one. There was one woman. Her name was Diane. She was one of those lonely housewives. And we had a competition one year where, uh, uh, if you drew drew a picture, you know, um, uh, drew a picture of Sonic or that, whoever had the best one would get a year's worth of Sega games. And uh, Diane, her son, drew a picture, and it was um, obviously violent, you know. Uh, Sonic and Knuckles uh, bashing the living shit out of Mario, and there's blood and flesh <laughs> of course. all over. You know? No wonder. <laughs> so naturally, that all these flesh. We, that was a championship photo. We actually photo. framed that picture. <laughs> we framed that picture. <laughs> Where was Peach? I hope Peach was, was safe from harm. I hope Peach was safe from harm. It was with Toad, okay? Uh, <laughs> that was in the other frame. Anyway, so... Um, um, yeah, and, um, and she ended up working for us uh diane yeah yeah so that lonely housewife actually ended up working with us and she was um yeah a, a great worker um but yeah yeah it was either kids or lonely housewives but 
peak times are always holiday periods, weekends, okay. and Christmas Day was just horrendous. And look, um, I think that was one of my regrets for w- working with Sega was that it, look, it was easy for the other guys to have Christmas with their family because they're in the same city. I, I didn't know anyone in Sydney, so I couldn't just pop down to my family down in Victoria and just pop in for the day and then head off back to work. I couldn't do it. So I missed out on a lot of Christmases with my family, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, those are the sacrifices I guess you make. But I've got another question for you. And now, this is probably a little seedy in terms of Sega's, Sega's business practices. But because yeah. you guys did charge about 95 cents a minute, a dollar a minute, were there, yeah. any, were there any instructions or were there any tactics taught to you by superiors to, to make sure that you kept people on the phone for as long as possible. And don't tell me no, Tim. <laughs> uh, uh, I will tell you now. No, it wasn't, it wasn't actually like that. But the pressure was, and, and I know it sort of goes in reverse what you're expecting, but what we had to do was be on top of our game. All right, so we had to know our games. We need to be able to use the database to answer the questions effectively and quickly Um, because we do, even back then, we did have regulators back then on uh, on consumer law. So we had to provide a a good service in in as quick enough time, okay? It didn't work on the, the same basis of, like, say, sex line, okay? So, you know... Okay, now I'm taking off my socks. You know, <laughs> what's <I'm> like that? <laughs> I wouldn't drag out the call, but that's that's why um, a lot of the original Sega Masters left because they felt pressured in a way. Um, okay. Because you know, like, like if you're if you want to help out somebody, you want to take your time. You know, so um, yeah, and the pressure of a dollar a minute or all that just put people off. Gotcha. You know? Yeah, it, it yeah. Was, I can imagine that it was probably a situation where you have to give them just enough information so they could understand the problem. And if yeah. they didn't understand the problem, they would call back again. Yeah. Which would make right. them spend. I, I'm, I'm guessing that because if you're having a lot of volume of calls of people just calling mm. to ask questions, if mm. you give them just the information just to give them a, a hint to be able to beat yeah. the game, but not go through them step by step by step, a lot of people are not going to get it at the first try. You know? That's right. That's right. Yeah, and, and what happened with the hotline afterward, uh, uh, but just after I left, it got sold off to a telemarketing company uh, that was based in Bondi Junction. It's sort of like a suburb just before that, you know, famous beach, <laughs> Bondi. Um so it was sold to a telemarketing company in Bondi Junction. And what they did is that they, they let go of all the staff. That was the first thing. And I think they upped the price per minute. I think it was maybe $2 a minute. And then, and then they brought in all, the star, all these people that liked video games, but they didn't love Sega. So they didn't know anything about the games. And the clincher was that they weren't allowed to play the games. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, yes, wow, yeah, yeah. Just, just so they weren't allowed to play wild. the games. And and there was like um, we were discussing this yesterday. I think I was the last one to leave, and and a new manager came in, and she started this process. She started to lock away the games on the weekends and i'm thinking well you know kids play video games on weekends we need to play the games if we get stuck if if like say kids stuck somewhere sometimes you need that visual reference to play the game while you're helping them out on the phone and she would lock away the games on the weekend and you just knew this is just not going well for us i mean you're making these really poor decisions it's that old line, you know, adults know best. Well, sometimes they don't because that it, adults don't, if, it, you, if you don't interact with the, the customers, which are the kids right now, if you don't know what their needs are, then you, you're not in the right position to, uh, position to yeah. make these 
these oh, choices. Yeah. It's just stupid, stupid. So it's, it's yeah. dumb management decisions. The, oh. uh, was there at any point when new, when this new management took over over at uh, I think you said Bondi Junction? Was there any yeah. effort or any outreach to speak with their remaining crew? To you know, to sort of ask what to do going forward, or to get some input of, of what to do going forward. No donuts. They gotcha. thought they knew best, and they didn't last very long. I think it was about six months they lasted. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they didn't Swift. last. <laughs> and there's two reasons clearly for that. One was the price and the internet. Um, and the internet slowly coming on, and obviously the PS, uh, the PS One coming on board. So yeah, there were a lot of factors why it went downhill. Yeah. All right. So speaking about, like, go, go ahead, Brian. Go ahead, buddy. No, I was saying like I, it always. Whenever I read the history of Sega and how things came about, like for example, like an old article from Tim, uh, from Tim Fowers from all the old IGN, mm. it always reminds me that. Sega didn't go out with a bang. It always felt like it went no. out in a whimper. A it just it just slowly death. Yeah. And and when you look at the how much like you were talking about Tim, the the amount of market that they used to own back in yeah. the early nineties, uh, it reminds me of like the old like what happened with the Xbox and Sony in Japan, you know? Mm. Like mm. there's no market for the Xbox. You know, right now yeah. Sony and PlayStation on the Japan on the Japan market is just king there, and yes. to be able to the fact that Sega yeah. let that go in Australia yeah. and yeah. we just basically said, you know what, we're just gonna thin ourselves out and just keep pumping out these consoles that may or may not work, and um, they went out like that to to the point where they they decided to we're not gonna make consoles anymore, we're gonna start making software. Yeah. And and the fact that like Dalton was talking about that in the early '90s there was a huge console war between Nintendo and Sega that they yeah. both hated each other. You know, there was always like yeah. commercials about you know Crash Bandicoot crashing against you know. Dude, I want to get back to that. Like, I want I want uh, Sega or not Sega, Sony and fucking Nintendo and X, or Microsoft to just fucking go at it, but they won't. Fuck yeah, it. why no. not? Oh, they won't. Oh, I don't we think have I t- Mario. And Sony, <laughs> we, we, we got Mario and Sonic in the same game for crying out loud. That's never yeah. going to happen anymore. I don't, I don't think, I, I just don't think that the market allows for something like that to happen. I think it's, for us as fanboys, it's something that we would want to see, right? Because at the end of the day, we are fans. And even me, like, you know, I, I try as hard as I can. And you guys know, uh, the folks over here at AEG, you guys know that I try my hardest to be that guy who goes down the middle and to stay above that fanboy you know, to stay above the fray of that fanboy stuff, the wars and all that. But at the end of the day, I am biased towards uh, towards Sony, mm. right? If yeah. I had to choose one, right? If somebody put a gun in my head, a Nerf gun, by the way, and said, <laughs> and said, Sony or Microsoft, which one is it? Which one? And I'd have to go with Sony. But I think that the market, the way PC. it works now, I, I mean, think about it. I mean, think about it. Developers make video games using Microsoft tools, right? Develop uh, uh, yeah. uh, Sony developers, Sony first-party developers working now, create their game on a PC, and then they either port it over to uh, to a PS4 or, or next-gen PS dev kit. Yep. Uh, I just I just don't think the the market forces allow for that type of bashing that yeah. we used to get back back days in the in the Nintendo. I mean, th- I mean, thinking Nintendo, I, I don't know, I don't know if you remember this. Uh, Tim, but Nintendo used yeah. to, uh, oh no, not Nintendo, but yeah, Nintendo used to like uh, sort of gate how many games developers, third-party developers, could put on their platforms to make sure that they <laughs> they didn't outsell first-party Nintendo games. I mean, that is just <clears throat> anti-competitive. You would have yeah. Konami set up different like shell corporations so they could put yes. out more games a year because because. Of, <laughs> Stupid Nintendo, like, anti-competitive rules. I'm like, who does that? Yeah. Here's the thing for me. Not only would the market not allow it, but the fact that we are living in a generation of gamers who feel victimized, who feel bullied, quote-unquote, whenever they don't get what they want. And here's a, here, I'll give you a best example. If mm. Sony started making like a console war against Microsoft, no, will be so, uh, PlayStation against Xbox, and yeah. you start having these commercials of like 
PlayStation is the best. Xbox sucks. Yeah. You're going to be start seeing a lot of articles going, Microsoft is making fun of Sony users. We feel victimized. And you will see all this dribble <laughs> from, that will go on Twitter. And you hear all these people talking about it. Say, I feel victimized by this. It, it, we are not living in a type of generation like back in the 90s where yeah. you would laugh at that. And you think, oh, that's just fun. No, now yeah. it, they take it too well, much seriously to the point where it's like, oh, come on, man. People back then probably would have taken it seriously too, but they couldn't get on the internet and talk shit about it. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> the AEG think, uh, hypothetical of the week. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, that, that rivalry was really strong. There was a, an instant, uh, I was mentioning it before, an instance where, uh, so as I said, we, we sponsored one of the, the basketball teams here in, in oh, well, uh, in Sydney, the Sydney Kings, and we have um, a guy rock up in a Sonic suit. Okay, so he's there, he's got his Sonic gear on, and then, oh, yay, it's Sonic, yay, yay, yay. And the guy was doing it one day. He said, he headed off to his left. Somebody said, Mario is king, Sonic sucks, and smashed him in the arm. And 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 ran off and there was like escorts with him and the guy fled off into the crowd and the guy Derek who was wearing the, the, the gear he he was like holding his arm and, and he couldn't perform he's, he, he almost dislocated his shoulder that's what that rivalry was like back in he's the lucky. early 90s. He's lucky he was in the, he was he's lucky he was down under because if it was the States he would have been shot. <laughs> oh, shot stabbed or something. Sonic, like Sonic would have pulled uh, out a piece, that's for sure. Um, oh mate. Yeah, so yeah, nowadays like when you see a uh, see on Twitter uh all these uh fanboys and that. Um and look I, I was one of them. I was one of them. But but in hindsight you sort of look back and go oh that's a little bit naive because look at the end of the day we all day we all like gaming yeah you know we we love gaming in one way shape of one shape of another it doesn't really matter it's great that you're passionate about one particular brand but you've got to remember that you know just because somebody else likes another brand doesn't mean that they're a bad person or they don't know what they're talking about yeah Yeah. exactly (laughs) Uh, you, make, you, make a, you make a great point. Uh, well, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Goose. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I just wanted to point that out. I just want to make. I, I just wanted to say that I, I wish that that very line of thinking we could just apply writ large to, to everything yeah. going on right now. <laughs> yeah, and that's the oh, thing. Yeah. It, it, oh, I'm not going to get into that. it here on the show, but that that thinking applies to not just gaming. It's everywhere. So oh, it's that like, way yes, of thinking. Um, I, like I said, we're not we're not going to get into that here on the show. But <laughs> before we move on, I uh, one of the uh, one of the guys in the chat, one of the folks in the chat yeah. is asking, they wanted me to ask if you knew anything about the 10 Gen versus Nintendo case. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I, don't know how, I don't know if the, I'm pronouncing it right. The t- yeah, the 10 Gen, because 10 Gen was, was um, a part of Atari. Um, and I think uh, the, the, the story goes is that Ah, there, there's a big issue with the uh, the Tetris game, and that Tetris was going to come out onto the Genesis, and I think about four or five copies were made, and then they realised that the license didn't go with Sega; it ended up with Nintendo. So all the games had to be destroyed, but there's only five remaining, and apparently one of those games got sold for half a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had one of those floating around in here. Yeah. Oh, there's actually a guy in Melbourne. Uh, I think you, you might know him, The Last Gamer. He's actually got a copy of it just sitting in his, in his collection. Mm-hmm. Um, no, that, that's yeah, the one that I know. I, yeah, but uh, uh, I don't know the, the in-depth story about Tengen and and Nintendo. All I know is that, that there was a period of time that Atari had – the license, uh, sorry, uh, Sega had the license to do 10 Gen games, and then it changed over to Nintendo. I, th- I think that was the case. But um, sorry, whatever your viewer's name is, I'm probably completely wrong and completely fucked that up. Too. Yeah, this, this viewer, <laughs> he definitely he definitely knows what he's talking about for sure. So yeah, but 10 Gen, 10 Gen, the name originated the same as Atari. Atari 
the, the name for Atari originated from a starting, I think, a move or a, a starting position in the game, uh, ancient um, uh, Asian game Go. And Tengen was a similar move. They just used a different name. Okay. That's where it came from. That's why it originated from Atari. Yeah. Fair enough. And uh, we've got one more topic we want to talk about a little bit. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to close yeah. the show on this topic. Um, cool. And that is, uh, there have been jokes tonight on this episode, especially from me, about Sega being dead and gone and all this stuff. But they, <laughs> they are not. They are, they're still around. They're still, they're still publishing games. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't know if you can, you can speak to that at all, if you were able to see it. Because obviously, a tremendous amount of downsizing happened at Sega, right? So, oh, yeah. And, and, yeah. Yeah. And like, Sega, they, they've, always, they've always had their own publishing company, They've always had. Uh, mm. They're a developer too, I believe. Are they developers? Yes, that's right. Um, that's yes, right. yes, yes, yes. They, they, they are. They are both a publisher and they develop both games in house. They have an assortment of teams. They work with uh, third party teams. They, they are a publisher for all intents and purposes. Yeah, I, yes. like I said, this, Sega, Sega's not dead, right? Sega's still around, and I remember. <laughs> I remember uh, people like. I think last year when Sonic Mania came out on the Switch, people were like, yes. "Oh man, this is weird. This is weird playing Sonic on a Nintendo console." So, and obviously it's not the first yeah. time Sonic's been on a Nintendo console, but oh, um, people people really really felt weird playing that. There you go. <laughs> That's the, weird. Yeah, that is weird. They're mascotting together. What, on a fucking... what the hell is that? <laughs> but, yes. So, um, so what what are my thoughts? Yeah, what are your thoughts on yeah. Sega as a developer and publisher? Go ahead, Goose. I'm sorry. No, yeah, um, just to, to, to close it out, just to, to try to distill what it is that we want to close out on, is what are your thoughts on Sega as a developer, and have they been able to live up to that promise that they weren't able to live up as as a as a hardware manufacturer? Right. On the you know on the flip side of the coin, being a being a developer of games, because you know they put out, in my opinion, they put out really fun games, great games. Yeah. But yeah. you know when I take their library, let's say yeah. let's say this generation and, and half of last generations, right? And when I take their library mm-hmm. and I compare it to a, a first party Sony or a first party Microsoft or even yeah. a Nintendo, I think that they fall short. I think they even fall short to. To uh, a, a company like, and this is again, this is just my opinion. You're, uh, you're, you'll probably disagree, which is fine. I, I, I want you to disagree. <laughs> but even a company like, say, a Ubisoft or even an Activision. Mm. Now you've had some titles, like I think of, uh, I think of Obsidian's Alpha Protocol, which was a Sega, a Sega developed game. You think of uh, Bayonetta. The, the first Bayonetta was also published. Yes. It was developed by Platinum, but it was published by Sega. I think yeah. of uh, Binary Domain, which was a niche. PS3 uh, 360 game, which was a pretty cool game. Um, mm. Like, like you no, know, again, what what has Sega become post hardware, and what are your thoughts on 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 them as a company now? Um, I don't I don't feel bad about them. Um, I feel a little bit sad that they don't do consoles, but I also am mature uh, are mature enough to understand why they're not. Um, their games, I, I think they they they're really good games. But they're nothing like, where, you know, the, the sorts of AAA titles that we see here. Um, and you're absolutely right. You are right. They're, they're not right there up at the top. And probably because they can't attract the right people. Because they're already taken by other AAA companies, you see. So um, that's probably the struggle that they're having right now. But... Um, like the, the Western view of Sega right now is, you know, there's that, that there's that disappointment that they don't do any hardware, and they're not as big as what they were before. But if you go to a place like Japan, they're everywhere because they don't just deal with games; they deal with arcades, they deal with toys. the The name is everywhere, so their views are going to be a little bit different. As for the Western view, we're just disappointed, really. And um, I think that, look, I think there's going to be a day that they're going to bring out a ripping, an absolutely ripping title. And it might just bring the name back again. It might just bring the name back again where everyone's talking about them. Like, uh, 
I'm trying to be, how do you pronounce it? Bethesda. 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 Yeah, yeah. Like them, we we talk about them. Um, maybe not with all the glitches of no, you know, no patches or that or poor updates. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, but, yeah. Got um, a Bethesda he may not know how to say the name correctly, but he knows yeah. they do create some crappy <laughs> glitches in their game. I'll yeah, you there that. you go, there you go. See, I even know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I think a day will come for Sega that I, I don't think they are ever going to get back into consoles ever again. I don't think they will. So you, you're uh, because, saying that the Dreamcast 2 is not happening? I don't really think so. <laughs> I just I, wanted to... I don't really think so. You heard it, it here be... on the AEG show. No it Dreamcast no. 2. I, I, I agree with Tim. I agree with him entirely. And for the listeners out there, I'm so sorry for not mentioning Yakuza, which is probably Sega's biggest title as oh, of right yes. now. Yakuza. I apologize for not mentioning yeah. that. Yeah, Yakuza, yeah. Well, We're going to get called Yakuza. out and thrashed online. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know... This is how you build haters the big right titles, here. The big titles now, everyone talks about Fortnite. Oh. And, I, and I think that's... You know, there's a lot of... Oh, no, no, no. Hey, but just remember, they're playing video games, and that's the important thing. And they'll grow up, and they'll probably play something else another new title will come out so if sega brings out a title on the same level as like your fortnights uh, or anything like that then maybe they'll they'll get better developers better programmers better game writers and that i'm not saying that they're bad now but you know take it up another level but yeah, they'll come I, back one day they'll come they back one day but not in consoles no. They haven't broken out. I know exactly what you mean. Like, you know, you think of Activision, they've got Call of Duty. You think of Ubisoft, uh, Ubisoft they've got Assassin's Creed. You think of Epic, they've got Fortnite. Yeah. And in, re- in relation to your comment about hardware, I just, I just don't see how they could put out hardware in today's market. Just, no. I mean, just think of think of the think of the way the hardware market works. You have to invest billions of dollars in R and D. Mm. You've got to you've got to bring it to market. You got to sell it at or below Stop. cost, Come here. right? Uh-huh. And then you got to wait years to turn a profit. I mean, that's Look just not that's that's just yeah. not a recipe for success. And in today's world, where we have things like X Cloud and Project Stadia just a uh, uh, hop and a skip away, right? <laughs> I, I I just don't see how. Uh, I love that dog, by the way. I just. <laughs> Yeah, she's freaking out because there's people over and she doesn't know who's here. And so I was just oh. like crying on camera. So if you guys hear that, it's this dog right here. She's got anxiety. Hey, girl. Yeah, you're. Arr. 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 But... Arr. Think about it. Like, making a console is hard. Like, people realize, like, oh, no, you know, Sony, PlayStation, oh, how, can, how hard can it be? No, we're talking a lot of failed consoles. For every Nintendo 64, there's a topographics. You know, for every, you know, PlayStation... A Neo Geo. A Neo Geo. An Ouya, for crying out loud. Like, think about it. It's... There's so much money, time, and effort that you have to spend on creating a product that may or may not be successful. You know, because depending on the market share that is going on right now. Look at the, look at the Wii U. Yeah, 360. They were successful, but they're never as successful. No, the, the Xbox was successful in the States, but was never successful in Japan. It wasn't as successful up in, you know, in the Western, in the Eastern side of the world. It's, it's just difficult for a company like Sega to say, you know what, we're going to allocate a couple of billion dollars to create a new console for the newer generation of gamers. Yeah. When they may not even want that. They may just want to play like a PC game that just is easier that way pcs are are already something that everybody uses and that anybody Mm. can make you know Mm. yeah i make them all the time for sure so for them it's just much more you know business you know wise to just allocate their some software as opposed to hardware uh would i like to see a new sonic game that you know like sonic adventure you know type deal yeah do I see it happening in the near future? And yeah. no. <laughs> so yeah. Actually, Tim, before we close out here, I think we, I think this probably will be our, our fi- well, it'll be my final question. If if mm. you could somehow magically manufacture your dream <laughs> next gen Sega console, what 
would you want out of it? How would it look like? What could it do graphically? Just, I'm pretty sure that you, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you've you've thought about this countless times of cool. what would my ideal next gen Sega system would be. Ah, uh, okay. Um, Putting them on the spot. It have to be okay. It have to be. It have to be at least eight K. Um, Whoa! Yeah, shooting 8K. for the stars. Yeah, shooting for the stars. Um, it would have to be a multi-platform device, so you wouldn't just play games on there, but you'd be able to hook up your Netflix. Uh, or whatever type of media that you have out there, because um, that's that's where movies are going now. So they they would have some sort of um, licensing agreement with Netflix in some sense. It also would come standard with a keyboard, um, so you would be able to do your web browsing easily <laughs> on your regular TV. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the control pads, I, I think you'd still stay with the standard format that's coming out nowadays. You don't need to muck around with that. The offset um, sticks, right? Offset like Xbox One, the best, right? Yes, just say yes. You agree. The parallel <laughs> sticks. <Yeah. laughs> just, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, telling you my age. I'm showing you my age here, but I have such a hard time with today's control He's like, pads. fuck I really sticks. Just, I use a D-pad, just, motherfuckers. Just, yeah, I'll go use... Here's the Sega. <laughs> like, what? I just want to punch. You know, <laughs> which button is it? Fighting <laughs> <So, laughs> uh, stick. Oh god. Um, what else would I want? Um, I, I, I would just want the best that you can get, possibly get at the time. But you can have the best thing, as we've already seen with the Dreamcast. You can have the best, most advanced console of all time. But you've got to be able to market it well. You've got to promote it well, and it's just so hard. So yeah. yeah, you can have a you can have a dream console as much as you want, but it all comes down to sales figures and how you market that product. And it it's all about these things, yep. the games, you the be games able to bring that in come first and third party. You got to you got to do it yeah. all. You got to do it all. Um, yeah. So look, pipe dreams, and look, maybe maybe in. 15, 20 years' time, we won't even be talking about consoles. There'll be some other format. Look, Stadia. the companies... Yeah, yeah, well, look, we've gone from uh, DRAM chips to CDs, and now things are going online. You know, you download the games offline, and that's that's been cost-effective, and it's easy to, to develop. It's easy to sell out on there on the market, get it out there. You might see a similar sort of thing happen with consoles. I, I look, I'm just speculating. Having, yeah, speculating. That might be the way it goes because all companies sense. really want to do is save money. If they can do something easier and cheaper, they will do it. So, yeah, yeah we might be having that conversation in twenty years' time. So it sounds like Tim's dream version of the next Sega is a pretty high end mm. PC. Oh no, um, God! I, yeah. As soon as he said keyboard, I was like, "You just walk right in." <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes. yes, but but the thing is, the thing is with his console is that it's it has modular parts. So unlike a PC, if if say you needed to upgrade it, you just click in a part and it does that. You don't have to, you know, have Open the whole thing pull up. the whole thing up. Put a new, ch- um, you know. It awfully, new it awfully sounds like a streamlined PC, but a PC nonetheless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're just like describing a PC yeah. that's plug and play. Look, yeah. Look, new GPU. Click. It's like a seatbelt. <laughs> um, look, it's a it computer. Look at. <laughs> it's like a seatbelt. Like I, like <laughs> I like that. I like it. It's like a seatbelt. I like that so much. Here's the thing for me. Like now that you're talking about it, now I just had like a crazy thought happen to me. Like right yeah. Now. Um, you're talking about like how things have gone from you know RAM chips to you know CDs to virtual things. Do you see that happening with consoles? Where we're going yeah, from that's what a, I, yeah. like a console, like an actual console to actually like an actual just software, where it's like oh, yeah. get into your computer, PS4 software, get in there, and you just play those games automatically yeah. without having any hey, issues. Will, you know. I I think it will go that way because it's the the only thing that hasn't been. It hasn't been touched in 
in terms of, you know, they're trying to do so much to make uh, how do I, to, to make it cheaper and easier to develop and distribute. And I just, I just get this gut feeling with everything else that's going online and being put on the cloud. I, I don't know how they do it. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm no um, hardware engineer or software engineer. I don't know how you do this stuff. But sometime in the future, I reckon it would be that sort of format. And then you'll have different types of virtual consoles that you'll be able to to play on but i don't i don't know how you would play it i just don't know it just get this feeling that everything else is going online maybe the hardware itself will go into some sort of hardware format i i don't know maybe maybe a bit like um the, the little plug-in for your uh amazon what's the amazon channel fire stick uh yeah yeah you just plug that in and then you've got access to that be a similar sort of tool maybe something like that but I don't know. I'm just I'm just talking shit now. So yeah. <laughs> that's what happens when you get questions. Yes. But, yes. Um. Anyway. So before we close this episode out, I want to. Mm-hmm. We all know it's August now, which means yes. that Borderlands Three is arriving next month. I believe September. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't have the exact date. I'm not looking it up, but I believe it's September. Mm-hmm. Um. I just want to make an announcement. We are announcing our Borderlands 3 giveaway winner within the next couple weeks. We're doing it two weeks before the launch of Borderlands 3, and that is for the Super Deluxe Edition on the console <laughs> of your choice. All you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and tweet at us with the hashtag AEG Borderlands. And, and that... we're doing international giveaway as well. Yeah. Oh, so our, you can be down international- under. That's Dre. right, Tim. You could maybe win if you if you want if you want. Maybe you could win. I, I thought I'd win by veto, like just being here. Oh, <laughs> you, you want me to you want me to rig it? I'll see what I can do. I'll put your name in the oh, hat oh, okay. and only your name. Oh, um, I, I thought this would be like my payment for the appearance fee or something like that. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll work that out later. AEG skimping on the payment. We're gonna duck out after this. See ya. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just want to, I just want to thank Tim for being on this show. Absolutely free. Um, yeah, I must love him. <laughs> we want to, we want to thank you dude for real for coming on all jokes aside. Please, we had, I had a please, great time. Don't charge us 99 cents per minute, please. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Please oh. don't do that. We're, we're going to get broke on that. Sex hotline, Tim. My... Oh, oh God. God. I've already had my wife send you the bill. <laughs> Fair enough. Just have her donate nah. it to our Streamlabs. Um, <laughs> but no, thanks again, yeah. man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for agreeing to come on the show. I just want to. I just want to point out that uh, Tim actually reached out to us like when we we first started following each other. He said, "Yeah, I'll definitely." Before we even said anything, he, he took note that we were we were a gaming show, and he reached out and said, "Hey, I'd love yeah. to be on the show sometime." And it took us a while. We we've been pretty slammed with uh, you know with the summer and E three yeah. and all that other stuff, but we got around to it. He's been on the show now, and uh, thanks for coming on, man. I, I re- we all really appreciate it for sure. Ah, thanks for having me. And um, yeah, uh, is there anything that you yeah. want to plug? Uh, me? You want to plug, plug away? Plug, <laughs> yeah. plug, plug your Twitter, plug your uh, your uh, Facebook, uh, or whatever you folks are into my, these my, days. My Facebook, <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> you. No. Nah. <laughs> put your put us Go in your top eight. Uh, Alta Vista. Um. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, my main channel is just my Twitter. So just look for at Tim Gadler. That's all you have to look for, and you'll see uh, 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 the banner there where I've got the old uh, Sega Hotline sticker up the top there. Um. So you know you'll have the right Tim Gadler. Um. But yeah. Uh. Be free to follow me. Um. I'm happy to answer any questions and uh, yeah, if uh, anything you want to know about the hotline, I'm more than happy to help you out. All right. <laughs> Sounds good to us. And uh, again, thanks for everyone who tuned into the live stream. This is, this is still in beta, but we appreciate everyone. We appreciate the donations we got. I did not catch who, who the second donation was from and I kind of feel bad about Jacob that. Jacob Cantrell. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know. I didn't catch it, but Thanks again, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We've gotten a lot of compliments and feedback from you guys lately, and it's been 
it's been overwhelmingly positive, and I we appreciate it. So thanks again, everyone, for listening. Thanks yeah. for the support, the continued growing support. We we really do appreciate it. It means a lot to us. So, yeah. yeah, that's all I have to say on this week's episode, unless these guys have anything else to say. Then... Uh, all, I'm, all I just want to say is uh, thank you, Tim, for being here with us. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was an amazing experience having you here. And I'm just going to say this uh, for that uh, for Jacob Contrell, thank you for the donation. Uh, we appreciate your support. I just wanted to say that before we left the the show. Uh, and, and with that, I'll let she is Dick, well. Dick, Dottie, Dalton finish it off. <laughs> Gustavo, anything anything you want to add? Yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you to to the fans who tuned in. Thank you for the, for the uh, donations. I also want to uh, express my sincere thanks to Tim. Thank you, Tim, so much. For uh, being for being part of the show, and I think I think that what you do is important because you know I, I look at my nephew who's so young and he, he doesn't know what a Sega Master is, he doesn't know what what the Sega Hotline <laughs> was, right? And and we need folks like you to to show these youngins, these these young kids who are growing up playing games. Hey, this is this is where you come from, this is our lineage, yeah. this is this is our history, and what you do is a great thing. Thank you so much, Tim. Oh no, thank you, thank you, and look. To be honest, I, I didn't realise the amazing following for retro gaming itself and and the history because um, I went to a, a a gaming market for the first time and what I was surprised was the diverse range of ages and genders, um, people so keen on it and um, and I'm realising. The, the, the more I put myself out in public, people are saying, oh, I remember calling you guys or thank you so much. And and just that recent thing on where we ended up on the front page of, of Twitter, uh, oh, sorry, front page of um, Reddit. 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 And people say, oh, thank you. You guys are legends. And uh, one guy actually called us the Beatles of video game. You know? <laughs> <That's really laughs> and we're just like, me and the other hotliners, we're just blown away by that. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah. I, all I can say is that I'm a living relic, as my tr- Twitter. Uh, hey, we're not Twitter too far. We're not too far behind you there, man. We're getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're getting right there. Uh, uh, living relics of the uh, of the of the uh, hotline days and and the, the video uh, video game wars yeah, and that. So, but um, yeah, no, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me, um, and um, and thank you for understanding my language. <laughs> Oh, we did. We just we just made it up as Trust we went. Me. We have no idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get, get uh, are well. the subtitles coming in? <laughs> yeah, because we have subtitles for Marlin already. So <laughs> yeah, we're good. We yeah, got we got closed yeah. captioning. <laughs> but uh, again, thanks everyone up. for okay. listening. Thanks for, for for the continued support, the growing support. We really do appreciate it. Um, <laughs> that's gonna do it for this week's uh, this week's episode. Um, thanks again. No worries, guys. I'll catch you later. I appreciate everything. Thanks for everything. No worries. Yeah, thanks again, Tim. That was awesome, dude. We had a lot of fun on that one. That's good. As yeah. As long as that helps. We yeah. might have to do a sequel episode with you in the future, man. We'll see. We'll please see. do. Yeah. Especially yeah. Please after do. that documentary drops, maybe you'd like to come in and promote it or something. Yeah. It's- What's that? When after after your after that documentary, you said you'll be in drops. Well, maybe hang you on. We're come still in- streaming. Oh. You can't talk about it. <laughs> we just blow the cover in the entire thing. That, Great, that, that, that. Thanks everyone for watching the stream. What the you just, hell you just got. You, about? you didn't understand any of that. That wasn't real. <laughs> Thanks again. We're gonna close out with that. So um, it's Australian talk for. See you guys. Out with the Bye-bye. Bingos, okay. <laughs>